subscribe to youtube.com slash JIL Worldwide and be updated with the latest teachings and other church happenings. Click the subscribe button now.
lahat ng pagsamba ngayon at kailanman. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Ang lahat ay magsabi ng Amen!
humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name of Jesus. No other name but the name of Jesus. At his name, church, the enemy trembles. At his name, any storm comes down. Amen. At his name, at the mention of his name, the dead will rise up. Amen. At the mention of his name, every heart will be restored. Amen. And at the mention of his name, there is healing! No other name, oh Lord. No other name. Church, as we sing this song, we do not just sing it, we declare it over our lives. We declare the name of Jesus in our church, in our country, in our families. We declare the name of Jesus all over the earth. With faith, we sing the name Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Papurihan, palakpakan po natin ng malakas ang ating Panginoon. Hosanna in the highest. To thee we ascribe glory, honor, and praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glorify thy name. We say glorify thy name. Wonderful Lord, wonderful Holy Spirit. Jesus, we love you today. Sinabi po ng salita ng Diyos sa awit 145 verses 17 and 18. The Lord is righteous in all His ways. He is faithful in all He does. The Lord is near unto all them that call upon Him. To all that call upon Him in truth. Lord, matuwid ka sa lahat ng iyong mga ginagawa. Kailanman hindi ka nagkakamali, Panginoon. Kung may mga pagkakataon sa buhay namin na nagaganap, kung minsan hindi namin maunawaan, nasaktan, ng ulila, naghahanap ng katanungan ang marami po sa amin. Subalit hindi mapapasubalian ang katotohanan, matuwid ka sa lahat ng iyong mga ginawa, maging sa lahat ng mga bagay na itinulot mong maganap at mangyari sa aming mga buhay. And you are faithful in all na ginagawa mo, Panginoon, sa lahat ng iyong nilika. Hindi ka nagtatalusira, Panginoon, sa iyong mga pangako. Kahit kami o Diyos ay nagkukulang, kahit kami, Panginoon, ay nagkakamali, Ikaw o Diyos, ang iyong katapatan ay nananatili. And Lord, sabi ng Lamentations chapter 3, Your faithfulness are new every morning. Sa bawat araw, sa bawat umaga ng aming mga buhay, Ikaw ay nananatiling matapat. O Diyos, sa umagang ito ng aming pananambahan, inuna namin Ikaw ay parangalan, luwalhatiin at dakilain sa amin pong kalagitnaan. At sinabi mo sa iyong salita, Lord, na sino mang taong unang hahanapin ang iyong kaharihan at ang iyong katuwiran, ang lahat ng pangangailangan ng taong iyon ay idaragdag mo sa kanilang mga buhay. Kaya naman, Panginoon, walang dalangin ng puso ang bawat isa sa amin. Maging ang aming mga hikbi ay iyong nababatid, Panginoon. At alam po namin, O God, na Ikaw ay handang kumatagpo sa bawat pangangailangan ng iyong mga anak na nandirito ngayong umaga sa JIL Prayer Garden. At dakilang ama ay dinadalangin po namin maging sa countless number of people viewing and watching this television program via Light TV, God's Channel of Blessing. At maging sa aming Facebook page at YouTube channel ng JIL Church Worldwide. San mang panig ng mundo, Panginoon, nakakabot ang gawain ito. Lord, may you minister in a very special and personal way sa lahat ng mga sumusubaybay ng gawain ito. And even, Lord, we pray sa iyong lingkod na gagamitin ngayong umaga for the release of your anointing power of the Holy Spirit. Let Him speak, Lord, the thus saith the Lord. Father God, may we all hear the prophetic voice of the living God this morning through your servant. And that God, sa iyo po namin ipinagkakatiwala ang lahat-lahat ng bagay at inaangkin namin. Kung papaanong sa simula pa lamang ay dumadaloy na po ang iyong kapangyarihan. 
sa pagpapatuloy ng gawain ito. Walang isang lalaki o babae, Lord God, young and old, viewing and watching this television program nang hindi mapagpapala ng iyong kapangyarihan. Sa iyo po namin, ipinagkakatiwala ang lahat ng bagay ngayong umaga. And Lord God, to you, we give you back all the honor, praises and glory. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen and Amen. Let's give God the best clap of bring a praise. Hallelujah! Praise God, praise God. You may be seated for a moment. Good morning. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Good morning! Amen. Praise God. Magandang magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. At uh, gayon din po, magandang magandang umaga po sa lahat ng mga sumusubaybay ng ating gawain. Ang, at, ang inyo pong nakikita ngayon ay ang live na gawain ng Jesus is Lord Church Worldwide dito po sa JIL Prayer Garden 101 MacArthur Highway, Bunlo, Bukawe, Bulacan, Philippines. At ito po ay isa lamang sa gawain ng JIL Church na naka-scattered in different parts of the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao at maging sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo. Kaya po, nagpapasalamat tayo sa Panginoon sapagkat ang mga tunay na nagmamahal sa Panginoon ay hindi kayang pigilin ng anumang gawa ng kaaway upang tayo hindi makasamba kay Lord Jesus. Amen! Praise God. Patuloy po ang ating pag-aanyaya uh, sa lahat ng mga viewers po natin. Napakaganda po at alam natin kayo po ay napagpapala habang kayo po ay nanonood ng gawain ito sa atin pong social media account at sa TV. Pero alam po ninyo, napakasarap po na maranasan at ma-experience ninyo na nahan dito rin po kayo sa JIL Prayer Garden. At patuloy po ang ating pag-aanyaya while we are observing ang tinatawag po nga protocols na na itinagubilin po ng ating pamahalaan eh maluwag na maluwag po we have uh, meron po tayong napakaluwag na lugar para po tayo ay makapagsama-sama sa gawain po ng ating Panginoon we are ensuring po and assuring po even our brethren na nahan dito po na ito pong lugar na ating pinagdarausan ay ginagawa po natin yung mga itinatagubilin po ng ating pamahalaan. Kaya nagpapasalamat po tayo sa Lord dahil tayo po ay kung titingin si Lord, sabi ng Bible, the hour cometh and now is the time that the Father is seeking forth for His true worshiper. At nagpapasalamat tayo ng tingnan ng Panginoon, ang JIL Prayer Garden, nahan dito po tayong lahat. At marami pa po ang dadalo. Amen po! Palakpakan natin ang malakas si Lord. Well, sa oras pong ito, sa biyaya po ng ating Panginoon, ihanda natin ang ating puso, ang ating isipan sa pakikinig ng mensahe ng ating Panginoon na dadalin po ng ating international president and founder ng Jesus is Lord Church Worldwide, Bishop Brother Eddie Villanueva. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Isang mapagpala, makasaysay ang araw at mabuting araw sa lahat po ng narito ngayon sa loob ng uh, New Prayer Garden Church ng Jesus Lord Church uh, worldwide dito mismo sa 101 MacArthur Highway Bunlo, Bukawi, Bulacan, Philippines. At maging ang mga sumusubaybay sa Luzon, Bisayan, sa Mindanao, lahat ng sulok ng bansa, ng mga JIL churches, at maging sa more than 60 countries of the world. Ay, uh, ang isang mapagpala na araw sa ibang bansa, gabi, mapagpalang araw, mapagpalang gabi sa inyong lahat. Purihin ang Panginoon sapagkat uh, nagagawa natin ang sinasabi ng Panginoon in and out of season. Preach the word. Preach the gospel of love and salvation of Jesus. Ito ang perfect command, perfect will ng Diyos na buhay. At naalala ko ang Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, sabi ng Diyos, Do not forsake the assembly, the fellowship of God's people, people who are ordained to worship the living God in spirit and in truth. Para praising Hebrews chapter uh, 10 verse 25 Glory to God Kaya uh, Naramdaman ko po ang tuwa sa puso ng Panginoon Alam niyo sa pagdating ni Antichrist Bawal na bawal sumamba sa tunay na Diyos Kaya maraming tao hindi pwede makasamba sa tunay na Diyos 
ayon ni Satanas. Ano yung si Antichrist? Satan incarnate. Kung si Jesus Christ ay God incarnate, Diyos na nagkatawang tao, ay uh, si Satanas naman, meron din siyang uh, tinatawag na uh, tryon, tryon na uh, personalities. Ano yun? Dragon, si Satan. Beast, si Antichrist. The Satan incarnate. And the false prophet. Kaya tat- barkadahan hul sila rin. Barkadahan. Para bang counterpart ng Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. At ang God the Son, alam natin, the God incarnate. At uh, purihin ng Panginoon, tayong mga tunay na tagalangit, yung nakaranas ng tunay na born again experience, hindi na tayo makararanas ng seven years great tribulations under Antichrist. Kaya ho, palakpakan natin ang Diyos na buhay. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. By the way, kausap ko ho ang uh, pinagmamalaki ng lalawigan ng Bulacan. A brilliant practicing lawyer, but very unassuming, very humble, and yet so dedicated servant of God in the government. Walang iba kung hindi ang ating pinagmamalaki, the pride of Bulacan, Justice Secretary Maynard Guevara. Kausap ko siya, I think, uh, kahapon ba, kamakalawa. At uh, sa aming sharing time, inabot kami ng tatlong oras. Hindi namin na malaya ng oras. At siya pang humingi ng prayer sa akin. Yun pala, Bible reader siya. Yung daily bread ay araw-araw binabasa niya ang Bible. Kaya pala ang kanyang mga policies sa Department of Justice ay in line with God's command, with God's righteousness. At nabanggit niya sa akin, uh, baka hindi mo alam, Brother Eddie, Uh, ang mga churches allowed na to be open not only for 10% congregation but but 50% 50% kaya malapit na rin mag 100% sapagkat ang perfect will ng Diyos huwag mahadlangan ni Satanas ang pagsamba sa kanya ng kanyang mga anak yung tinatawag na lalo na Sabbath day alam na sa mga Kristiyano ang naging Sabbath day natin yung resurrection day ni Jesus Sunday resurrection ni Jesus yan ang naging applicable na Sabbath day ng Christian world kaya dapat ay makita ng Diyos na walang kapangyarihan walang puwersang kadiliman upang tayo pigilin sa ating tinatawag na fellowship gathering of God's people for number one purpose to glorify the Lord by worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Palapangan natin minsan pa ang Diyos na buhay. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Habang ang ating pong mga kapasturan ay patuloy na nagtuturo ng eschatology, the study of the end times, the study of the last things, eschatology, Ito po ang direksyon ng Diyos sa mga churches ngayon sapagkat kung ating pag-aaralan ng malalim ang eschatology o ang pag-aaral sa mga huling araw, the study of the last things or the study of the end times, all the signs of the second coming of Jesus are already present in our midst. Yung tanong ng mga alagad kay Jesus Christ sa Matthew 24, Lord, what are the signs of your second coming and the end of this age? Matthew 24, mababasa niyo ron ang iba-ibang mga signs, iba-ibang palatandaan. At lahat ng iyon ay present na, including the pig tree. The pig tree representing Israel as the final clock, the ticking, ticking clock ng second coming. Uh, yan ay mapag-aaralan sa eschatology. At binabati ko ang Department of Education ng uh, Jesus Lord Church Worldwide sa pangunan ng ating Executive Director, si Reverend Pastor Bobot uh, Bernardo, ang ating youthful yet so anointed theologian na nagdaos siya 
kamakailan ng uh, special uh, one whole day na seminar on eschatology. Lahat ng pastors dito sa Metro, Mega Manila, mga karatig probinsya. At yun ay kinakalat ng JIA leadership sa Luzon, Bisaya, sa Mindanao, hanggang sa buong mundo. Sapagat may higit 60 countries ang inabot ngayon ng mga chapters ng JIL Church worldwide sa buong mundo. At uh, ang paniniwala ng mga kapatiran natin sa ibibang bansa bago mag-rapture, ang uh, more or less 200 countries of the world ay uh, matayuan ng banner of the Lord Jesus Christ before the second coming of the Lord. Huwag natin kalimutan Ang second coming of the Lord ay binubuo ng dalawang phases. The first phase or the first stage is the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church meaning na makikita natin sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse uh, 16 and verse 17 nakapaloob yon sa verse 13 hanggang verse 18 yung resurrection ng mga dead Christians who died in Christ, bagamat ang kanilang spirit and soul ay nasa piling ngayon ng Diyos, 2 Corinthians 5.8, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Pagyating ng isang sigaw ng Diyos at uh, yung tinatawag na command of archangel and, uh, and trumpet of God sa isang kislap mata, Tung! biglang-biglang mabubuhay na maguli ang mga namatay kay Kristo Jesus. Yung kanilang mga katawang nalibing sa lupa o saan man ay biglang-bigla magkakaroon ng glorified body katulad na katulad ng glorified body ni Jesus Christ nung siya mabuhay na maguli matapos maipako sa krus at mamatay at nailibing ng tatlong araw. The same kind of glorified body, the so-called incorruptible body, immortal body for eternity yung po ang ibibigay ng Diyos doon sa mga Mabubuhay na maguli pagyating ng rapture of the church. At ang rapture of the church ay like a tip in the night. Tip in the night, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. And like a twinkling, twinkling of the eye, sa isang kislap mata, walang sabi-sabi, walang announcement ang rapture of the church. Uh, sa 1 Corinthians uh, 15, verse 52, in, in the twinkling of an eye, Pagpikit ng isang mata mong gano'n, gano'n kabilis. Pagkabuhay na maguli ng mga dating mga namatay na Kristiyano at sasalubong sila sa alapaap kay Jesus in the clouds. Kayo ba't ako kung tayo tunay na born again, kung tayo nabubuhay na bilang tunay na Kristiyano, hindi fake. Tunay na Kristiyano. Kasama tayo sa pap- hindi na tayong mamatay, papalitan ito ng katawang panlangit. In the twinkling of an eye, Itong katawang ito na susceptible sa sakit, sa karamdaman, sa kamatayan ay bigla magkakaroon ng glorified, immortal, incorruptible body. The same body that Jesus had when He was resurrected from the dead. At ahabol tayo doon sa meeting in the air, the grand reunion in the air. At pagkatapos ay dadalhin tayo ni Lord Jesus sa third heaven. Iaakyat niya tayo sa third heaven. At ibig sabihin ng third heaven, merong first heaven, merong second heaven. Uh, yung first heaven, yung nililipara ng mga aeroplano, yung nakikita natin sa kalawakan, first heaven, himpapawid. Ang second heaven, the stellar heaven, yung kinaroroonan ng mga planeta, ng mga, kon, mga, mga galaxies. At handun din ang headquarters, ayon sa mga Bible scholars, ng army ni Satan. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Yung high places na yun, andun sa second heaven. And yung third heaven is the eternal home of the living God who created the heavens and the earth. At yung mga libu-libong mga taong binigyan ng Diyos ng privileyong makarating sa langit at bumaba. Katulad ng associate pastor ni Reverend Yong Gichon ng South Korea. At doon sa libro ng uh, Imagine Heaven. Doon sa libro na uh, Imagine Heaven ni, uh, ni John Burke na mababasa ninyo sa, uh, makikita ninyo sa YouTube. Ganon din yung Heaven by Randy Alcorn. 
ang dami na ngayong mga libro na talagang nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na revelation truth tungkol sa real heaven. Real heaven as revealed in the Holy Bible. Pero hindi alam ng, million, uh, ng bilyong-bilyong mga tao. Kahit mga Kristiyano, hindi na intindihan ang real heaven. Akala nila ang real heaven ay yun lang ang mga espiritu ng tao na anak ng Diyos ay yan doon, nag, nag-worship sa Panginoon, araw at gabi, walang ginagawa. Hindi nila alam, ang real heaven ay higit na maganda sa pinakamagandang lugar sa balat ng lupa. Pinakamagandang playground, pinakamagandang waterfalls, pinakamagandang uh, laruan ng mga bata, uh, ang mga mansions, ang mga robo cities. Patotoo yan ng mga tinatawag na NDE. Ano yung NDE? Near-death experiences ng mga tao. Yung namatay sa hospital, pagkatapos ng limang oras, sampung oras, nabuhay na maguli. Si Dan Paper, 19, 19 minutes na namatay sapagkat na aksidente siya. At yung kanyang bangkay ay ano, sa isang tabi. Yung spirit at kaluluwa niya nakarating sa langit. At nakita niya ang super, super ganda ng langit. Ayaw na niyang bumaba, pero pinababa siya ng Panginoon para maging witness at biglang nabuhay rin yung kanyang katawan. Thousands of people have experienced this all over the world. Pero hindi ito alam ng maraming Kristiyano. Bakit? Kulang sa teaching kung anong real heaven. Naalala ko yung sinabi sa aklat ng isang uh, tungkol sa heaven. Yung uh, malaking libro na dati isa sa mga binabasa ko noong kay Bagong Born Again, yung Systematic Theology ni Louis Berkop, isa sa mga naging paborito kong libro noong unang panahon. Ano? Makapal yun. Several pages nagtuturo tungkol sa creation, tungkol sa mga Bible characters ng Old and New Testaments, tungkol sa life and teachings ni Jesus Christ, tungkol sa mga doktrina, several pages tungkol sa... Baptism and Communion. Pero pagdating sa hell and heaven, two pages lang ang tinuturo tungkol sa hell. One page lang tungkol sa heaven. Kaya milyong-milyong Kristiyano, hindi na intindihan ng heaven. Wala silang, parang ayaw nilang pag-usapan. Maraming churches, iniiwas ang ituro ang heaven. Samantalang yon ang ultimate home. yon ang ultimate eternal home ng mga tunay na Kristiyano. Sabi nga nung nabasong isang libro, <clears throat> kung kayo ay mag immigrant sa ibang bansa, alimbawa, nag-apply kang immigrant sa Canada, sa New Zealand, sa Australia, sa Amerika, bago ka mag immigrant doon, pag-aaralan mo yung bansa na yun. Kasi doon ka mag immigrant eh. Doon ka natatanda at baka doon ka mamatay. Pag-aaralan mo kung anong lifestyle ng mga tao ron, ang climate, ang religion, ang culture, lahat. Weird na Weird. Billions of Christians all over the world, they have no interest to study what is heaven. Yung kanilang eternal home, hindi nila napag-aaralan. <laughs> Kaya ang daming, sabi ng isang writer, bakit na itago sa mga Kristiyano ang tunay na heaven? Kasi pag nakarating ka ron, ayaw mo na bumalik sa lupa. Hindi kaya ng salita para ipaliwanag. Ang tanong ng iba, bakit hindi nilagay sa Bible yung mga detalya tungkol sa real heaven, sa third heaven, yung mga details? Eh kasi kung nilagay ng Diyos yun, wala na magpipreach ng Great Commission. Lahat mag-uunahan ng pumunta sa langit. Sapagat sukdulan ng ganda at sukdulan ng sarap ng buhay sa langit. Hindi alam nyo ng billions of people. Kaya maraming tao takot mamatay. Maraming tao Ninenerbyo sa mga krisis. Ano mang klaseng krisis ang mangyayari sa mundo kung alam natin kung taga saan tayo? Kung alam natin we are just tourists tourist in this world, in this troubled world. Hindi makapapasok sa atin ang fear. For God has given His people not the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Kaya... With this background, kaya ang uh, nangusap ang, sa, ang Panginoon sa akin puso, matapos sumabog ang new coronavirus pandemic at maliwanag ang message ng Diyos sa akin, 
You teach my pastors. You teach my under shepherds. You teach my people. Prepare for eternity. Prepare for eternity. Sabagat malapit na malapit nang dumating ang Panginoon, especially the rapture of the church. By the way, sa mga Bible scholars, genuine Bible scholars, ang signs of the second coming ni Jesus, ang signs sa Bible, Matthew 25, Matthew 24, Matthew 25, sa book of Daniel, sa book of Revelation, lahat ng signs na yan ay signs ng second coming. Pero sabi nga, walang sign yung rapture. Bakit? Kasi yung rapture mangyayari like a tip in the night. Parang magnanakaw na hindi nagpapaalam. In the twinkling of an eye, bigla na lang mangyayari yung rapture. Yung mga kotse, mga wala ng driver na pag born na ganyan driver, biglang mawawala. Biglang hihigupin ang kapangyarihan ng banal na Espiritu at dadalhin dun sa alapaap to meet the Lord personally and other uh, Christians who died in Christ. Yung nakalagay sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 up to verse 18. Kaya uh, napakahalaga po ang revelation truth. Truth will set people free. Kaya habang tayo po ay uh, ang message ko last week, hindi ba? The Lord said, while you are waiting for my second, re- second coming or the return of the Lord to earth, especially preceded by rapture of the church, while you, you are waiting, You have to occupy till I come. Luke chapter 19 verse 13. Sa ibang translation, occupy till I come. I think sa King James. Sa ibang translation, do my business till I come. Maging masipag kayo sa paggawa till I come. Huwag yung tayo tatamad-tamad. Ay, darating na si Lord, eh. maghihintay na lang ako rito. Hindi na magtatrabaho. Hindi na gagawin ang dapat gawin. The more we have to work hard, ako ho, bakit pinipilit kong mag-i-preach ang gospel? Dalangin ko nga sa Diyos, tapusin na itong pandemic na ito. Binigyan na yan ng last call o last worldwide call ang lahing tao. Bahala sila kung ayaw nila magsisi ng kasalanan at magbalik loob sa Diyos. At ang GIL churches ay gusto natin pakalatin sa buong mundo. Mabilis ang massively preaching the gospel of love and salvation of Jesus. Para sa, pagkatapos nung biglang mag-rapture, Marami ang makasama sa langit at hindi ganong marami ang makasamang may iwan sa kamay ni Antichrist. Ngayon po, while uh, the Lord uh, impressed upon my heart few days ago, while we are emphasizing the importance of understanding the various uh, major historic events that will happen in the last days, pag sinabi yung last days, You know, ang time frame between the first coming of Jesus, nung siya magkatawang tao, up to the second coming of Jesus, the actual second coming of Jesus. Yun ang last days. At uh, yung nasa gitna po noon, yung rapture. Rapture. Kayo at ako bilang parang nasa uh, elevator na kasimbilis, mabilis pa sa bala ng baril. Swing! Bigla na lang kaharap natin si Jesus. We can see Him personally, face to face. The begotten Son of the living God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who sacrificed His life on the cross of Calvary because of His love for the sinners, because of His love for you and me. That's why Romans 5.8, how God commended or demonstrated His love for you and me, that when we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. Hallelujah. Isa mo nang palakpak sa Diyos na buhay. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. In and out of season. Sabi nga sa 2 Timothy, I think, chapter 4, yung in and, in and out of season, preach the gospel, preach the word. Ngayon po ang akin hong, uh, title ng yung teaching message ay... Uh, Actually ho, ang title ko nung una ay nabanggit ko kay Pastora Joby kangina the, uh, the urgency The urgency of God's Word in the last days Sabi niya, Daddy Sabi sa akin ni Pastora Joby Daddy, better na isimplify mo ang title Kaya the importance of God's Word Especially in the last days Madaling intindihin 
ang importansya ng Diyos, ang, kahalag, ang, ang importansya ng salita ng Diyos, lalo na sa last days. Kasi nandito tayo sa stage of what I call prepare for eternity. Yung mga taong lasing sa mga bagay sa sanlibutan, lasing sa paghakot ng kayamanan kahit sa masamang paraan, lasing sa kapangyarihan, lasing sa palakpak ng tao, sa karangalang panlupa, lahat ng iyan ay nasa ilalim ng dominyo ng kaaway ng Diyos. Kaya meron sinabi si Jesus, Mark 8.36, I think, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and suffers the loss of his own soul to hell forever? Anong mapapala na isang taong makamit man niya ang buong sanlibutan, ang buong kayamanan, ang buong kapangyarihan, ang buong karangalang panlupa, kung ang kaisa-isa niyang kaluluwa naman ay mapapahamak at mahulog sa dagat-dagat ang apoy ng impyerno. Kaya napakasarap kong maging tunay na kristyano. Amen? Praise God. Palapakan pa natin minsan pang Panginoon. Amen. Hallelujah. Kaya ang akin pong uh, simpleng title, The Importance of God's Word, especially in the last days. Actually, even before the last days, sa Old Testament pa lang, masyadong mahalaga ang salita ng Diyos. Napakahalaga pong salita ng Diyos. Kaya, hindi nakalimutan ni Lord Jesus. Doon sa Matthew 4.4 at maging sa Luke 4.4, ang binanggit ng Panginoon, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. Ang tao'y nabubuhay hindi lamang sa tinapay, kung hindi sa bawat salita ng Diyos na lumalabas sa kanyang bibig. Sa Matthew 4.4. Doon sa look for for senior kat ng Panginoon, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. Napakahalaga ang salita ng Diyos. At gusto kong sabihin, in the final analysis, if we are serious students of the Holy Bible, the word of God is so indispensable. And to me, it is impossible for human being to be saved without the word of God. Why? Because we can only enter heaven once we are saved. Once we are forgiven. Forgiven sinners. Sabagat lahat tayo makasalanan. Ipinanganak sa kasalanan. Minana ang sinful nature ni Adan at ni Eva. The so-called original sin. Malibang mawala yung original sin na yun through born again experience. Spiritual regeneration. Hindi relihiyon ang born again. Maraming tao na alin lang ni Satanas sa kala nila ang born again ay relihiyon. Kaya sinasabi ng iba, hindi, hindi naman ako born again eh. Ikinehiya maging born again samantalang sabi ni Jesus, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Malibanan tayo yung mga born again na may panganak na muli sa Espiritu, hindi siya makapapasok ni makasisilip sa kaharian ng kalangitan. Ikinehiya ang maging anak ng Diyos. Hindi nila alam yun. At sabi ng Panginoon, ang sino mang taong ikahiya ako sa harap ng tao, pagdating ng paghukom, ikahiya ko sila sa aking ama. Kaya, napakaganda, napakasarap ang maging tunay na kristyano, hindi yung fake na kristyano. Maraming mga fake news, hindi ba? Actually, sandam munto ng fake news ngayon sa buong mundo. Nagmamaniobra ang invincible power ni Satan. Ang mga tao ay nalilin lang kung anong mabasa sa dyaryo, maroon sa telebisyon, biglang maniniwala kahit hindi chinecheck kung tama nga o hindi. Kaya nagtatagumpay ang kasinungalingan sa katotohanan. Lalong kailangan ang salita ng Diyos, especially in the last days. Kaya number one na gusto kong ishare sa inyo, maraming katangian ang salita ng Diyos, meron lang ilan because of time constraint na gusto kong ibigay. Number one, The Word of God The Word of God produces faith. The Word of God produces faith. San makikita? Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. No person can establish right fellowship with the living God without the Word of God. It is impossible to please God without faith. He that cometh to God must believe that He is, 
and he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, Imposible na ang Diyos na may gawa ng langit at lupa ay matuwa at magalak sa buhay ng isang tao na walang pananampalataya. Iba ang naniniwala sa Diyos. Iba ang nananampalataya sa Diyos. Napakalaki ng pagkakaiba. Pumasok kayo sa mga bilanggo ang nag-rape, nagnakaw, pumatay. Yung sukdo lang kasama ang mga tao. Karamihan doon, pag tinanong mo, naniniwala ka sa Diyos, siyempre naniniwala ako. Nananalangin, nagdarasal, nagsisimba. Pero nagagawa ang lahat ng uri ng kasalanan sa mundo. Dahil naniniwala sila sa Diyos, pero hindi sila nananampalataya. Hindi nila narating yung estado ng pagtitiwala at pananampalataya at pananalig sa buhay na Diyos. Why? Because faith can only be born in the heart of man through the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Wala nang ibang paraan. Although yung mga hindi narating ng gospel ni Jesus, sabi sa Romans chapter 1, yung mga namatay na hindi nakarinig ng gospel ni Jesus, merong special treatment ang Diyos doon. Many Bible scholars believe. Sa Romans chapter 1, tingnan mo lang ang marvelous creation ng Diyos. Ang nagagandahang kabundukan, nagagandahang kagubatan, nagagandahang karagatan, nagagandahang kalawakang ginawa ng Diyos. Sa gabi, merong buwan na nagbibigay ng liwanag at mga estrella. Sa araw, merong, merong, merong araw, may sun. The amazing grace. Yun lang, sabi nga ng mga doktor, scientist, yun lang tao, mula sa tuktok ng ulo ng tao hanggang talampakan, iba-iba ang piyesa, iba-iba ang parts ng body ng tao, the anatomy of the body of man. Makikita mo ang complex incredible combination of teamwork ng different parts of the entire human body na walang makagagawa noon kung hindi Diyos lang. <laughs> Kaya sabi ng Bible, the fool had said in his heart, there is no God. The fool, I think in Psalm 14, yun, no, verse 1, correct me if I'm wrong, the fool, ang mga mangmang, Ay, nagsa, ang siyang nagsasabing walang Diyos. Isa ko na ron. No, okay, radical na activista for seven years, naging 80 years ako. Because of my exposure to the teachings of Marxism, Leninism, Tocha Pauchetung, and dialectical materialism, materialism, materialism theory. I used to prove in debate that there is no God. I even became best debater of the year in our university. I was very sincere but sincerely wrong. Kala ko, Believe in God is just a product of the fertile imagination of human minds just for the psychological satisfaction of the suffering humanity. I was so deceived. Seven years of my life. Ako hindi naniniwala sa Diyos. Hindi ko akala ko, napatalino ko na. Modesty aside, academic scholar ako na ako yung nag-aaral sa kuleyo, pero hindi ko alam, napakamangmang ko pala. I was very sincere but sincerely wrong because there is God. And we can never know God without knowing Him through His Word. Kaya meron kay isa isang libro na iniwan ng Diyos sa tao, ang Holy Bible. Ayaw pang basahin ng tao. At kung babasahin, padampot-dampot ang basa, ginagawang commercial ang relihiyon, Hahanap ng mga sekta sa uh, Bible para suportahan ang man-made doctrine ng kanilang mga kinagis ng relihiyon. Kaya napakaraming kaparaanan ni Satanas para madala ang mga tao sa dagat-dagat ang apoy ng impyerno. Purihin ang Panginoon. Because of the Word of God, na sinabi ni Jesus, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every Word of God. Because of the Word of God, genuine faith, the Bible kinds of faith, the Bible-based faith, the God's kind of faith, hallelujah, ay maaaring ipanganak sa puso ng tao sa pagkilala sa Diyos na nagkatawang tao. The Word of God. By the way, there are two kinds of God's Word. Yung isa, the living word. The living word. Ano yung the living word? John chapter 1. Uh, sa 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 nga pala sa King James Version Bible. There are three that by record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. King James Version Bible ng 1 John chapter 5 verse 7. Ano yung word? Pag pinuntaan nyo, John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
Yun ang salita na Diyos. Capital S, the word. Ang sabi ng John chapter 1, verse 3, Everything was created by Him, through Him, and for Him. And without Him, nothing can be created into existence. Para praising John chapter 1, verse 3. Kinunprim niya ng Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, verse 16. Everything was created through Him, by Him, for Him. Without Him, nothing can be created into existence. Para praising Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, verse 16. Makikita natin, the Word who was, with, who was with God in the beginning, the Word who was God is the co-creator of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, co-creator of heavens and the earth, co-creator of the entire universe. And this Word became flesh. This Word became man. John chapter 1, verse 14, the Word who was God became flesh became man and we have seen his glory as the only begotten son of the father full of grace and full of truth john chapter 1 verse 14 kaya ito the word of god who was with god who was god who was co-creator of god the father and god the holy spirit is the living word the second kind of word god's word is the so-called logos Logos means the written word. The written word. The words in the Holy Bible. The written word. And the written word is the producer of faith. For by grace you are saved through faith. It is not of yourselves. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9. Uh, for by grace you are saved through faith. It is not of yourselves, it is God's gift. God's gift. Regalo ng Diyos. For by grace you are saved through faith. It is not of yourselves, it is God's gift. It is not of your works, lest anyone should boast. Sa biyaya, kayo nangaligtas, hindi dahil sa inyong mga sarili, ito'y regalo ng Diyos. Regalo ng Diyos, walang bayad ng regalo. Hindi dahil sa inyong mga sarili, hindi dahil sa inyong mga gawa upang ang sino man ay huwag magmapuri. Inulit ito sa Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Tayo naligtas hindi dahil sa ating mabuting gawa. Kahit na marami tayong gawing mabuting gawa, kung ang sinful nature natin ay naka-welding pa rin sa ating puso, sa ating spirito, handun pa rin ang original sin, hindi pa tayo nakakaranas ng regeneration of the spirit, hindi pa natin naranasan yung tinatawag ni Jesus na born again in the spirit. John 3, 3, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Baliwala po ang, ang ating uh, karunungan kung hindi natin maranasan ang katotohanan ng tinatawag na kapanganakang maguli. Sa Bible, yung born of God, born from above, at saka yung born again, pare-pareho po ang ibig sabihin nun. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Palapakan muna sa nila yung Panginoon. Amen, Lord. So, God's Word is the producer of faith. Sapagat kung wala tayong faith na tunay, naniniwala lang tayong may Diyos pero walang faith. Sorry, pag pinag-aralan natin ang Bible, pag hindi natin narating yung, yung estado na makilala natin ang Diyos na buhay na nagkatawang tao, bakit siya namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, sinasamba ng milyong-milyong anghel sa kalangitan, nagkatawang tao para ano? para sa kanyang sarili hindi para sa mga makasalanan katulad ko katulad nyo lahat tayo sinners before having a personal encounter with Jesus Christ lahat tayo makasalanan kaya meron tayong judgment of death Romans 3.23 all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and Romans 6.23 the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Kaya meron John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Sa magitan ng ating faith, justification by faith, pag tayo ay naipanganak sa puso natin yung tunay na pananalig, pananalig, pagtitiwala, 
Minsan mag expound ako tungkol sa faith. Baka hindi ko lang matapos yung ilang mga mahalagang traits ng Word of God. Kaya pangalawa, the Word of God is the revealer of truth. The revealer of truth. Ang salita ng Diyos ang nagre-reveal ng katotohanan. Bakit mahalaga ang katotohanan? John chapter 8, verse 31 and verse 32. If you, if you continue in my word, indeed you are my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John chapter 8, verse 31, verse 32. Whatever the version in the Bible, whether it is King James, New King James, NIB, or EST, eh, Living Bible, whatever the versions, iba-ibang ang mga kuminsan, yung large nagiging big, etc., etc. Pero ang context, contextualized meaning is, is, is the same. Kaya ang uh, sabi ni Lord, tingin nyo sa sa NIB, yung modern NIB. Mas gusto ko yung original sa ng NIB. Nakalimutan ko sabihin kila Pastor Bobo at ano, Pastor Jojo, Pastor Stan. Ito kasing NIB 2011. Yung original, medyo... Uh, mas madali, mas maganda ang impact ng delib ng ng revelation anyway pare-pareho naman ang meaning if you hold to my teaching you are really my disciples sa King James and New King James if you continue in my word indeed you are my disciples dito you are really my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free napakahalaga na alam ng tao ang katotohanan kung ang katotohanan ay alam ng tao, ang, ang katotohanan ang magpapalaya sa tao. Example ko lang, sa Amerika, o lalo sa iba-ibang bansa, bakit maraming bansa failure? Pag bina, binasa ko yung isang libro, Why Nations Fail? Nagkamali, naging ignorante ang napakaraming tao sa pagpili ng kanilang mga leader. Napakadaling lokohin ng mga politiko ang mga tao. Kayang-kayang isway ang kanilang decision ng mga gimmicks ng mga fake news. Kaya, mabibilang mo sa daliri ang mga bansa na tunay na matagumpay ang buhay. Karamihan sa mga bansa, wasak ang bansa. Maganda lang sa propaganda, pero wasak. Mga, mga mamamayan naghihirap. Dahil nga, ang katotohanan ay naitatago sa isipan at puso ng sangkatauhan. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth. Indeed, you are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Tingnan niyo, maraming tao naniniwala ang reliyon ay makapagliligtas. Kahit nag-aral na sa kuleyo, scholar pa, iba, suma kum laude, doctorate degree holders. Pag pinag-aralan niyo ang ating history, ayoko nang banggitin, kasi ako'y high school pa, nagre-research na ako sa history. May mga taong napakatatalinong tao. Pumupunta ko saan-saan lugar, doon sa lugar na yun, nandun ang Diyos, pupunta roon. Mag-aayuno roon. Yung iba, pinanganak akong protestante, dito ako mamamatay. Niyaya ka pang kanyang reliyong kinagisnan. Pinanganak akong protestante, dito ako mamamatay. Ako naman pinanganak na katoliko, dito ako mamamatay. Ako naman pinanganak ako sa ganitong iglesia. Pinanganak ako sa ganitong uh, uh, denomination o reliyon, dito ako mamamatay. Niyaya ka pang reliyon, nakakalimutang yakapin ng kaysa isang bugtong na anak ng Diyos na nagkatawang tao at nagsakripisyo sa krus ng Kalbaryo at itinigis ang kanyang banal at walang dungis at wala ni katiting na kasalanan sapagat pinanganak ng birhing babae, malinis ang dugo, the only blood in heaven and on earth that has the power to wash away and remit the sins of mankind. Hindi nila... Alam yon ang niyayakap nila ang kanilang relihiyon Hindi nila alam ang impyerno. Pag pinag-aralan mo ang Biblia, ang impyerno ay punong-puno ng lahat ng tango na galing sa lahat ng relihiyon I respect all religions, but religion has no power to save. What is important for salvation is not religion, but relation. Relasyon at hindi relihiyon Tamang relasyon sa Diyos na makakamit natin sa magitan ng saving knowledge ni Jesus ang tumatanggap sa kanyang bugtong na anak na si Jesus na nagkatawang tao at namatay sa krus ng kalbaryo dahil sa kasalanan ng lahi ng tao, 
Itinigis ang kanyang banal na dugo na walang bahid kasalanan dahil pinanganak siya ng isang birhing babae. No touch si Maria ni Joseph nung sila'y magsamang mag-asawa until, until the birth of Jesus. Sabi ni Angel Gabriel sa Matthew chapter 1, yung dugo lang iyon ang may kapangyarihang mag-alis ng original sin. Ang dugo lang iyon ang may kapangyarihang mag-alis ng lahat ng klaseng kasalanan ng tao sa balat ng lupa. Kaya sabi ni John the Baptist nang makita si Jesus, During his time, tinuro niya sa mga tao that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. Kaya sabi ni Saint Peter, the only name given under heaven that man can be saved is the name of Jesus. Sabi ng Acts chapter 4 verse 12 and verse 10. Sinabi ni Apostle Pablo, There is only one God and there is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Meron lamang isang Diyos at isang tagapamagitan, mediator sa Diyos at sa tao. Walang iba kundi ang taong si Yeso Cristo, ang bugtong na anak ng Diyos na nagkatawang tao. Bakit kailangan niya magkatawang tao? Ang Diyos ay Espiritu. Hindi siya pwedeng mamatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo para tubusin sa pagkakaimbargo ang lahi ng tao ni Satanas. Kailangan may dugo na, duma na dumaloy. Sa Old Testament, dugo ng malinis na hayop. Yun tinatawag na type of Christ, blood. Pagdating sa New Testament, hindi na type, mismong dugo na ni Jesus ang actual na tinigis at dumaloy sa krus ng Kalbaryo. By faith in Christ Jesus, receiving Him as Lord and Savior of man's life is the only way para mahugasan lahat ang kasalanang nagbibigay ng death sentence sa impyerno. And we can know this through the Word of God. If you continue in my Word, Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 31 and verse 32, if you continue in my Word, indeed you are my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Palapakanas na lang, Panginoon. Amen, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The third, the third characteristic of the Word of God, the written Word of God. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. Sword of the Spirit. Sword of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17. Tingnan niya natin, basahin niya natin, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17. 17. Everybody read. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirits, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit. Everybody say the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Ang salita ng Diyos ay espada ng espiritu. Alala ba ninyo sa Matthew chapter 4 at maging sa Luke chapter 4, nagkaroon ng, ng uh, labanan si, si Lord Jesus at taong-tao si Jesus, tinukso siya ni Satan. Kung ano-ano ang ginawang panunukso ni Satan kay Jesus, anong pinanlaban ni Jesus? It is written. It is written. It is written. Jesus Christ did not lift a single finger, being the co-creator of God the Father. Dahil siya'y nagkatawang tao. Taong-tao siya, bagamat siya'y tunay na Diyos na nagkatawang tao. Ang ginamit niya, the Word of God, Sword of the Spirit. Naalala ko yung Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, I think verse 16, verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. Many, many years ago, hindi pa ganito kalaki ang JIL. Nagsisimula pa lang ang JIL Fellowship doon sa malapit sa karsada, yung dating puninaria. De La Rosa, naging Pulinaria, Villa Rey, nabili ng, nabili ng JIL. Yung House of the Dead, naging House of the Living. Merong tayong Jesus the Healer television program. May dinala sa ating malaking tao. Engineer, taga Nabaliches. Apat na, uh, tatlong, uh, dalawang linggo na na nakagapos, nakatali sa hospital dahil nagwawala. Demon possessed. Sabog-sabog na ang, ang, ang kanyang uh, labi, kakakagat niya. Wala siya sa sarili niya. Malaking tao. Nakapanood ng Jesus the Healer, dinala sa JIL Fellowship. Fellowship pa ang pangalan natin noon. Sapagat nung first 15 years ng JIL Fellowship, 12 years or 15 years, dahil nung unang panahon, kapag sinabing church, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, iniisip ng iba, ah, protestante yan. 
ay ayaw pumasok ng tao, ayaw mag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. Pag fellowship ay okay lang. Hindi pa nagmamature ng panahon na yun ang maraming Pilipino at that time, 40 years, 50 years ago. Kaya ang wisdom ng Holy Spirit, fellowship. At minsan ang usapan Diyos sa akin after celebrating our anniversary in Luneta, kinabukasan, walang JIL fellowship. Meron na kalagay church, pero ibang church. Basta, basta church lang, walang ibang pangalan. Isa lang ibig sabihin ng church, the traditional church. And the Lord spoke to my heart, now is the time to change fellowship into church. Pareho ang ibig sabihin sa connotation. Speaking of connotation, church and fellowship are the same, more or less. Gathering of people. Hallelujah. So, balik ako rin sa kwento ko. Hindi namin, kinakasot namin yung mga demon spirits. Pinagtatawanan lang kami, dinuduraan kami. Apat na tao ang may hawak sapagat nagwawala. Inabot na kami ng hating gabi. Sagi ko, Lord, hirap na hirap na kami. <laughs> Wala pang prayer garden. J.I.L. Fellowship pa lang nung unang panahon doon sa sulok nitong lupang ng aking uh, mga magulang. Nag-donate sila ng 100 square meters at the time. Nung ako ay umakit sa mezzanine, sabi ko sa mga kasama natin, mga pastor noon, sige, tuloy niyo ang exorcism. Nung sa mezzanine, binuksan ko ang Bible, Lord, anong kulang? Bakit hindi namin makast out? Dinala ko ng Panginoon sa Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. Anong sabi sa Matthew chapter 8, verse 16? Everybody read. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him. He drove out the spirits with the word and healed all the sick. Jesus merely used the word. Nagrema sa akin yun. Baba agad ako sa, sa, mula sa mesanin. At sabi ko sa, sa taong demon-possessed, nagwawala. Listen to me. In Jesus' name it is written. He who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. It is written in the mighty name of Jesus, we can cast out demons in Jesus' name. It is written, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church of the living God. And the church of the living God are com- is composed of the believers of Jesus. And Jesus said, I have given you all the keys of, of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Submit yourselves to God and rebuke the devil and he will flee from you. James 4:7. In my name, you can cast out devil, devils. Mark 16, verse 17. Wala pang limang minuto na kinote ko ang sunod-sunod ang word of God. Yung demon-possessed na malaking tao, engineer, na nagwawala at demon-possessed. Wala sa sarili. Sabog-sabog na ang, sa dugo ang kanyang, ang kanyang uh, kakakagat, ang kanyang labi. Biglang bumaksak, slain. Paggising, biglang bumalik yung matinong isi. Nahihiya siya. Nakita niya ang misis niya. At nagyakap sila. Completely delivered and healed because of the power of the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, in rebuking the devil. Amen! <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise God! Maraming tao, hindi naranasan ang pag-ibig at kapangyarihan ng buhay na Diyos. Dahil hindi nila naunawaan ang lalim ng kahalagahan ng salita ng Diyos. Hindi nagbibiro si Jesus nang sabihin niyang, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by, every, but by every word of God. The word of God is the sword of the Spirit. Tingnan ninyo ang Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Sika lalamang kanda, rabara sonda, rabara siya lalamahay. Amen, Lord. Everybody read. For the word of God is... Alive and active, sharper. Everybody read. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the binding soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Say one translation. It discerns even uh, the, the intents of the heart. The word of God is so amazing, so powerful, sharper than the two-edged sword. It can divide the joints from the marrows. It can divide the spirit from the soul. Na mahirap paghiwalayin, you know? Soul and spirit. It can divide. It can even discern the intents of the heart of man. That is the Word of God. The Word of God is alive. Sa ibang translation, the Word of God is living. 
living and sharper than the two-edged sword. Kaya sword of the Spirit. Maraming paraan para i-rebuke ninyo si Satan. Pag ang spirit ng financial bankruptcy nasa inyong pamilya, nasa inyong trabaho, nasa inyong finances, you confront the devil, Satan, and, and, your, and your spirit of poverty, spirit of bankruptcy, spirit of financial uh, bankruptcy, spirit of financial uh, difficulty. I bind you in the name of Jesus, in the name that is above every name. By the blood of Jesus, you are cancelled in my life, in my finances. I rebuke you. Get out. It is written. It is written. You caught the word of God. At yung mga demon spirits, alam nyo, usually, generally speaking, of course, with, uh, with exceptional cases, ang nangyayari sa natural world ay nangyayari sa spirit world. Kapag sa spirit world ng buhay mo, natatalo ka sa spirit world, ng mga demon spirits, nagmamanifest yun sa natural world. Kaya mahalaga yung spiritual warfare. After intercessory prayers, it must be followed by spiritual warfare. Yung sinabi ng angel kay, David, kay Daniel sa Daniel chapter 10, Daniel, 21 days ago, your prayers were already answered by God. Pero yung delivery ng sagot ng Diyos, hinaharang ng Prince of Persia. Kaya kailangan pa si Angel Michael na tumulong sa kay Angel Gabriel o sino mang mga anghel, kailang, kasi may ranggo rin ng mga angels eh, na siyang tumulong para ma, ma, matalo nila ang obstacles na humaharang sa manifestation ng sagot ng Diyos sa panalangin ni Daniel. Marami tayong panalangin kung minsan hindi nagmamanifest ang sagot ng Diyos because of the Obstacles, hindrances, blockages, pagaharang ng mga demon spirits. Kaya mahalaga, ma master ninyo ang prayer in tongues, praying in the spirit. Kasi yung praying in the spirit, iba sa praying with understanding. When you pray with understanding, yung simple, yung, yung ordinary language, Lord, bless this, Lord, bless my, uh, my wife, my, my husband, Lord, heal this, Lord, etc., etc., Lord, uh, help our finances, etc. Oh, my children, Lord, give them a good, uh, a good uh, life partner uh, someday, etc. Yung mga, yung mga panalangin natin, with understanding, naiintindihan ni Satan yun at ang mga demonyo, pwedeng harangin nila. Pero pag nag-switch ka sa prayer language, yung tinatawag na praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit, in the language of the Holy Spirit, hindi naiintindihan ang mga demonyo yun. Kaya, nagtatagumpay ang mga anak ng Diyos na kumpleto ang kanilang ammunitions, ang kanilang armory. Of course, even though we understand all these things, we can never be another God. We can never be God. <laughs> Again, everything is within the prerogatives of God. Anyway, uh, kaya ako na, naisip ito ako'y magtatapat sa inyo nung mamatay si Sister Doria the age of 73 bagay nagkaroon siya ng 7 years extension dahil nung una na, na discovery na meron siyang ovarian cancer pinagaling ng Panginoon pagkatapos nagkaroon ng lymphoma cancer sabi ng mga doktor magaling na remission na after seven years, biglang na cardiac arrest at the age of 73. Siyempre, masakit na masakit sa puso ko. Sa aking mga anak. Si Johnny nga, yung mga kap sa akin dito, sa harap ng, ng, sa harap ng, uh, uh, ng casket, copy ni Sister Dory, Daddy, parang hindi ko makaya. Iti ba yan mo, loob mo, nakalagay sa Bible eh, it is appointed unto all men to die once and then immediately the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 Schedule na ng Diyos yan sa mami mo. At least 73. E eh, nakalagay sa Psalm 90, ang long life 70. Pag umabot ka ng 70, may long life ka. Pag umabot ka ng 80 years old, meron kang long, long life. Long 80 years old pataas. At least ang, ang mami mo, Hindi ko alam, after two months, si Johnny naman ang susunod. Biglang tinamaan siya ng vasculitis. Ayon yun to Miguel. Katatrabaho. Sabi, ko, sabi ng doktor daw, magpahinga ka. 
Kasi yung sakit na yan, tama, hindi fatal yan. Pero yung gamot dyan, steroid, nagpapabaksak ng immune system. Pag bumaksak ang immune system, mapapasok ang infection. Pag bumasok ang infection at hindi na control, it means death. Sabi hindi, nakamaskara naman ako, etc., etc. Pinangunahan niya ang COVID test dito sa Buka, sa Bukawi. Sabi ni Professor Evelyn Katigbak ng UP, na consultant ni Johnny, alam mo, Brother Eddie, ang unang-unang nagpaka yung COVID test sa Pilipinas, ang Bukawi. Dahil si Mayor, umorder agad, nag-import agad ng test kit sa South Korea. Dahil meron siyang kaibigan sa South Korea at may JIL doon sa South Korea. Bago pa maisipan ng Manila, ng iba-ibang mga uh, bayan at siyudad sa Pilipinas, ang Bukawi ang nag-COVID test. Unang-una. Dahil ayaw ni Johnny kahit na isang taga-Bukawi magkaroon ng COVID. Pangalawa, nang mabalitaan niya ang mga gulay doon sa Cordillera, nabubulok lang, naawa siya rin sa mga tao, umorder ng ilang beses ng tunito nila ng gulay para ipamigay sa relief goods. Eh sumasama siya sa paghahanda, pagpe-prepare. Eh dapat nagpapahinga siya. Kaya nung nilibing nga siya, eh, sabi ni Joel, wala sa sarili si Joel, si Johnny, she prepared to serve the people rather than his her health. Anyway, million-million uh, ang nag, nanalangin naman sa kanya, hindi lang GIL people, pati the entire body of Christ. Sa Pilipinas, sa buong mundo, nagtataka sila, ba't hindi sinagot ang Diyos? Ang impression ng Diyos amin, tapos na mission niya sa lupa, napatunayan na niya, posible ang good government. Meron siyang mission sa langit, sabi ng intercessors for the Philippines. May mga ilang revelation. Advance party natin si Johnny at Sister Dory dun sa Third Heaven. Siguro, sila nagpusupervise ng house, ng mansion-mansion na pinangako ng Diyos sa kanyang mga anak sa John chapter 14. Ano? Whatever it is, uh, dahil sa nangyari na yon, ang aking gustong pagdapat sa inyo, mga kapatid, ayoko nang mag-preach ng divine healing. After 41 years, sabi ko, Lord, gusto ko, may na rin sa langit. Sumasama ang loob ng ibang anak ko. Bakit? Kasi marami, yung tatlong anak ko, buhay pa, tsaka may mga anak ko. No? Eh, wala na kaka kong ganang mabuhay kasi eh, miss na miss kong mami niyo. Napakadakila ang inyong ina. Shock absorber ko. At si Johnny, si Mayor Johnny, grabe. Pero... Pinaalala sa akin ng Diyos. There are ways and thoughts of, of God much higher than man's thoughts, much higher than man's ways. At pinaalala sa akin ng Diyos na ako'y bagong Kristiyano, merong healing evangelist, nagkukrusade, naka-wheelchair. Naka-wheelchair siya. Pero nagpe-pray siya sa mga may sakit. Gumagaling yung mga may sakit, naka-wheelchair yung evangelist. Yung evangelist nakaupo sa wheelchair. Dahil lumpo. Sabi ng media, how come you can pray for the sick and the sick got healed and you yourself are on the wheelchair? You yourself is still on the wheelchair. You are in the wheelchair. How can you pray for the healing of the sick when you yourself is on the wheelchair? E ang sagot ng healing evangelist, na hindi siya gumagaling sa pagkalumpo eh. Sabi niya, I never claim to be the healer. Hindi ko sinasabing ako ang healer. I teach the people the healer is Jesus Christ. And He is not on the wheelchair. Kaya ginamit siya ng Diyos for five years as healing evangelist. Gumagaling ang mga tao kahit siya nasa wheelchair. After five years, biglang gumaling siya sa pagkalumpo. So whatever our situation is, anumang klaseng pagsubok sa buhay dumating sa atin, always look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Anyway, turista lang lahat tayo rito. May mga tanong tayo sa ating isip, hindi pa, na, hindi pa natin alam ang kasagutan. Hanggang ngayon nga, nagtatanong ako, Lord, why did you allow that to happen? 42 years old with four kids, si Johnny. 
First day ng kanyang paging mayor, nirenounce na niya ang kanyang sweldo, dinidivide niya sa mga monthly outstanding employees ng, ng local government, ng Bukawi. Nagsishare ng word of God. <laughs> Kung minsan, nag, nag-altar call sa iba-ibang barangay, pinapatanggap si Jesus. Bakit, Panginoon? Sabi ng ibang mga Christian leaders sa akin, sila man eh, nanalangin din ang mga churches nila all over the world, pati sa Amerika. Ang mabalitaan nilang nasa hospital si Mayor Johnny. Bakit hindi sinagot ng Panginoon? Only God knows the answer. May limitasyon tayo. Anyway, turista lang tayo. Anyway, malapit na ang second coming, especially the rapture of the church. Kaya ako, naging bolder ako ngayon sa pagtuturo ng salita ng Diyos. Dahil gusto kong mapabilis ang second coming. The first stage of the second coming is the rapture of the church. The grand reunion in the air. Dahil miss na miss ko na ang aking napakadakilang may bahay, Sister Dory. At ang aking napakadakilang anak na si Mayor Johnny. Lumipat lang sila ng state, the state of eternity. <laughs> At pagdating ng rapture, basta matapat tayo sa Panginoon, hindi tayo may iwan sa kamay ni Antichrist. Amen? Makikita natin ang mamahal natin sa buhay na naunang namatay kay Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So the Word of God is the, ano yung una? Producer of faith. The Word of God is the revealer of truth. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God... The Word of God is life. Do you know the Word of God is life? Jesus Christ said, in John, 3, in John 6, 63, Jesus said, The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. The Word of God is spirit and they are life. Kaya pag binabasa natin ang Word of God, o kaya nakikinag tayo ng message from the Word of God, kung minsan tumatago sa ating buto, Sa ating puso, tinatamaan tayo. Akala natin, pinaparinggan tayo ng preacher. Eh, Holy Spirit ang nagre-release ng message based on His Word. Because the Word of God is Spirit and it is life. Kaya doon ko kinuha yung Sowe. Sowe, the life of God. The words that I speak unto you are Spirit and they are life. Life. John 6.63 Espiritu ang salita ng Diyos. Ang example ko, ito bang pulpito na ito? Totoo? Totoo, bakit? Nakikita nyo sa inyong sense of sight. Sense of sight, nakikita nyo. Sense of touch, nahawakan ninyo. Totoo. Does it have life? No life. Does, is, it, is, is there a spirit here? No spirit. Made of plastic, made of metal, this, this pulpit. Real, as far as the five senses of man is concerned, sense of sight, sense of, sense of touch, and other senses, sense of hearing, sense of smell, etc. But it does not have life, it does not have spirit. But the words of Jesus, the words of God are spirit and they are life. Kaya the Word of God has creative power. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. The Word of God has creative power. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Everybody read. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed or created by the Word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Hebrews 11 verse 3. The Word of God has creative power. Naalala ko, many, many years ago, wala pang GIL noon. Kristiyano na kami sa Maranata Four Square Church dito. Nagtayo ako ang kami, coordinator dito noong unang panahon. Dahil ako nakapa, kami, ang history ko ay naborn again ako sa mahimalang paraan. Walang, wala pang GIL siyempre noon. Baptist muna ng one year. Dahil walang Four Square Church. Tayo kami rito ng Maranata Four Square Church. Yung aking kapatid na si Bilen, na pastor ngayon sa Amerika, tinubuan ng malaking sis dito. 
ay accountant siya, CPA. Mapasok sa Makati. Sumasakay sa jeep dito. Jeep ni passenger. Nakikita ng mga tao yung bukol niya. Tinatakba niya. Sabi ng mga kaibigan niyang nurse doon sa Santa Maria Hospital. Mr. Bilen, dali mo nyo sa hospital namin. Sandali lang yan. Napakadali ng incision niyan. Hindi, by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. By the stripes of Jesus I am healed. Kinukot niyang word of God sa Isaiah 53 verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Surely He bore our sorrows. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon Him. By His stripes we are healed. The word of God says, By the stripes of Jesus I am healed. By the stripes of Jesus I am healed. Tinabukasan, lumalaki pa. Hindi siya pumitigil. Nilalayhans niya. After one month, o wala pang one month, sabi niya, By the stripes of Jesus, nakita niya, wala siyang masalat na bukol. Walang, nawala yung sis. Miraculously healed. Because the Word of God, the Word of God has creative power. Iba yung binasa natin sa Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. By faith we understand that the words were framed or created by the power of the Word of God so that things which are visible were created not by the things which do appear. Pag nireview natin ang creation sa Genesis chapter 1, God said, when the Spirit of God hovered or moved over the waters, God said, let there be light, and the light was. Let there be a firmament, and the firmament was. Pag pinag natin ang creation chapter sa Bible, in six day, in five days time, lahat ng bagay sa langit at sa lupa nilalang ng Diyos sa magitan ng salita. Words of creation. Because there are creative powers in your word. Ang tao lang ang nilalang ng Diyos na hindi words ang ginamit ng Diyos. Ang kamay ng Diyos ang nililok niya ang putik at nililok niya ang putik ng anyong tao at hiningahan ng kanyang spirit. And that, that uh, made of clay suddenly became a living soul. In the likeness of man, in the likeness of God. Kaya tayong mga tao were, were created by God according to His image and according to His likeness. Ang tao lang, ang nilalang ng Diyos na ang kanyang kamay, ang kanyang ginamit at saka hiningahan niya ng kanyang spirit. Pero lahat ng bagay nilalang niya, ang construction material niya, materials niya ay Word of God. That's why the Word of God has creative power. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kaya sinabi sa Mark 11.20, Mark 11.23, sa New King James Version Bible nga, Mark 11.23, eventually 24, please, everybody read with understanding. For assuredly, I say to you, Jesus said, whoever says to this mountain, referring to mountain of problems, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have, he will have whatever he says. You will have whatever you say. There are miracles in your mouth. Pag lumabas sa bibig ninyo, naku, wala na akong pag-asa, naku, hindi na akong gagaling, naku, may embargo na ang lupat bahay namin, naku, wala na pag-asa, itong asawa kong tabad na tamad, naku, itong anak, mga anak, itong anak kong ito, bobong bobo, wala na pag-asa. Kung anong lumalabas sa bibig mo, yon ang nangyayari. Because Satan will use your negative words to dominate your life. Kaya meron sa Bible na you're is snared by the words of your mouth. Kaya dapat i-develop natin ang faith life, ang lalabas sa bibig natin ay positive confession. Confession of faith filled words. Kaya mahalaga ang salita ng Diyos. Kapag ang kinukumpis natin ay ang salita ng Diyos, yun ang mangyayari at hindi ang negative things na kinukumpis natin na gusto ni Satanas. The Word of God has creative power. Pag pinag-aralan ninyong history ng JIL for the glory of God, 41 years, wala tayong television ministry. Ang mga kultong relihiyon, may television ministry, tayo wala. Nasa Arroyo High School kami. By faith, 
magkakaroon tayo. Umarikila tayo ng isang cameraman, si si Pimentel. Ang uh, pangalan ni Pimentel, kilala nila Neri. Namatay na si yung, yung magaling na cameraman sa Channel 2 yata, o Channel 13. Inaarikila namin siya. Every Saturday, gumagawa kami ng apat na programa para bawat Saturday, merong, o bawat Sunday yata, o Saturday yon o Sunday pa, one week na programa, one hour a day, once a week. Isang taping lang doon. Pinagsasama naman namin para makatipid. Isa lang ang camera. Jesus the healer. Pagkatapos ng isang message, pumunta ako sa kwarto. Magpe-pray ako, alisin ng Diyos yung message na yun sa isip ko muna. Palitan ng bagong message. Apat na, mag- maghapon na yun, apat na message. Para makatipid sa upa sa camera, makatipid. Eventually, I confess na magkakaroon tayo ng television station. Naghimala ang Diyos. Binigyan ako ng Diyos ng franchise. Mahabang istorya, isang libro ang susulatin ko rito for the glory of God. So we broadcasting network. Na ngayon ay merong Channel 11. Mabubuksan na uli ang Channel 11. Bukas ang Channel 33, ang Light TV, God's Channel of Blessings. At ngayon, nakuha pa natin yung digitalized channel, Channel 20. It will be a nationwide and eventually worldwide. Lahat ng yan because of the power of faith and because of confessing faith-filled words. Palapakan natin ang Diyos na buhay. Hallelujah. Last but not the least, ano yung, una, ano yung ating mga uh, be, uh, important traits of God's Word, the written Word? The Word of God is the producer of faith. The Word of God is the revealer of truth. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God is... Ano? The Word of God is life. Doon sa life, sa John 6.63, the words that I speak unto you are spirit and they are life. Pag dinagdag mo ron yung Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the Word of God is living. Nakalagay sa living Bible at sa ibang translation, the Word of God is living. The Word of God is not only life. The Word of God is also living. Life and living. Napakasarap ang mga revelation truth pag tayo ay nag-aaral at nag-meditate ng Word of God. Hallelujah. And then the last one is, the Word of God is what? The, the sword of the Spirit. And then the Word of God is, the Word of God has creative power. Last but not the least. Do you know the Word of God is a medicine? Pang ilan yun? Pang pito na ba yun? Pang anim? Help me. <laughs> the Word of God is a medicine. Pang pito, no? The Word of God is a medicine. Everybody say, the Word of God is a medicine. Naalala ba ninyo yung Psalm 107 verse 20? Psalm 107 verse 20. King James, New King James, or whatever the version is. Everybody read. God sent His Word and heal them and deliver them from their destructions. The Word of God, He sent, God sent His Word and healed them. Bago pagalingin, sent the Word. Sent the Word. Because the Word is a Spirit. The Word of God is life. The Word of God can quicken the mortal body, even the circumstances in your life. The Word of God can change because it has creative power. The Word of God is a medicine. God sent His Word and healed them and saved them from their destructions. Nakalagay sa Psalm 107 verse 20. Pinadala ng Diyos muna ang kanyang salita at matapos dali ng kanyang salita doon sa mga taong tumanggap ng kanyang salita, doon sa mga taong nanampalatay at nagbukas ng kanilang puso sa salita ng Diyos, pinagaling ngayon ng Diyos ang may sakit. Because the Word of God is a medicine. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, up to verse 22. Kung maaari yung New King James Version, New King James Version Bible. Uh, John chapter, uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, up to verse 22. Everybody read. Everybody read. My son, give attention to my words. 
Incline your ear to my sayings. Pastor, please. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Pwede bang pagsamahan natin yung pagsamahin yung apat na verses na yan para huling basa natin verses 20 to 22. Now, for the last time, everybody read with understanding. My son, including my, yes, my daughter, give attention to my words. Bigyan mo ng attention ng aking mga salita, my words, sabi ng Diyos. Incline your ear to my sayings. Lagi mong buksan ng iyong mga pandinig sa aking mga sinasabi. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Lagi mong tinititigan. Madalas mong tinitingnan ang salita ng Diyos. Kaya noong unang panahon ng mga Kristiyano, ang mga nakasulat sa dinding ng kanilang mga bahay ay mga scriptures, mga salita ng Diyos. Ngayon, ang nakasulat, ang nakadisplay, hindi salita ng Diyos. Nakadisplay mga hubad na mga, mga modelong mga babae, etc., etc. Napasok yan ng apostasy. Pero noong unang panahon, pag pinag-aralan ninyo ang history, ang mga tunay na Kristiyano, ang kanilang mga bahay, may mga salita ng Diyos. Sa ang salita ng Diyos, you cannot separate God's Word from God Himself. Dapat maintindihan natin. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Itago mo ang aking mga salita sa iyong mga puso. Naalala kong bigla yung Psalm 119 verse 11. Panginoon, tinatago ko ang iyong salita sa aking puso para hindi ako magkasala. I keep thy word in my heart so that sin cannot come in. Psalm 119 verse 11. Dito ang sabi rito, Ang sabi nito, The word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Balik tayo sa ating uh, talata. Please. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22. For they are life. The words of God, they are life to those who find them. Kapag na, na, na-discover nyo, Natagpuan ninyo ang salita ng Diyos, mga salita ng Diyos, tinago ninyo sa inyong puso, for they are life to those who find them. And health, health, kalusugan to all your flesh, kalusugan. Sabi ng mga Bible scholars, yung salitang health, kalusugan, galing sa salitang Hebrew, na siyang pinanggalingan din ang salitang medicine. So they are health or medicine to all your flesh. Kaya the Word of God is a medicine. Kung may sakit ka, lagi ka nakukonfess. Gabi araw, in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. By the wounds of Jesus, I am healed. If it is not yet your appoint, appointed time to die and go home to heaven, if it is not yet your schedule to go to heaven, the Word of God is so powerful in manifesting your healing and deliverance. Because the Word of God is also a medicine. God sent His Word and healed them and saved them from their destruction. Amen? Palakpakan natin ang Diyos sa buhay. Bago akong mag-pastoral prayer and minister to all your needs, basahin natin ang Matthew chapter 8, beginning verse 5 up to verse 13. Matthew chapter 8, beginning verse 5. At makikita natin dito, ito ang, ang famous story tungkol sa centurion, centurion's story. Centurion. Sa Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to verse 13. Everybody read, beginning verse 5 ng Matthew chapter 8. Now, wa- now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. I will come to your house and heal him. Ano ang sagot ng centurion sa verse 6? Verse, verse 9? The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word. Speak only a word and my servant will be healed. Sa, sa King James Version Bible, is speak only thy word. Speak only thy word. You don't need to come to my house. 
the roof of my house is not worthy for you to come, Lord. You speak only your word, and I know my servant will be healed. That is the faith of the centurion. The centurion is not a member of the Jewish nation. The centurion was a Gentile. Ang Gentile ay ang classification nila ay mga aso sa mata ng banal na Diyos noong unang panahon sapagat ang chosen people ay ang mga Jewish people. Hindi pa pumapasok ang dispensation for the Gentile. Ang dispensation at that time was still for Jewish people. Pero kahit na sa Gentile, marami na siyang narinig marahil tungkol kay Jesus. At lumapit itong centurion na ito na isang military officer. Ang isang centurion na isang military officer na merong 100 soldiers under his authority. At sinabi niya, pag binasa mo yung susunod, Speak only thy word, my servant will be healed. Anong verse 9? Verse 9? For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. To another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Verse 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Basahin niyo ulit. Napakahalag. Ang daming lesson dito eh. Meron lang isa na sana'y marinig ng mga Israelites sa Israel o ng mga Hudyo all over the world. When Jesus heard it, He marveled and said to those who followed Him, who followed, As surely or verily, sa ibang translation, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Not even among the people of God, the chosen people of God, Jesus Christ did not find such great faith. Not ordinary faith. Great faith na ipinakita ng Gentile na centurion. Tingnan yung verse 11. And I say to you, sabi ni Jesus, many will come from east and west. East and west. Malalayong lugar yon. Sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Maraming mga taong manggagaling sa malayong lugar, hindi members ng chosen people of God. Papasok ng langit, makipag-fellowship kala Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the sons of the kingdom, yung mga original na anak ng kaharian ng Diyos, the Jewish nation, na ayaw sumampalataya kay Jesus bilang Mesias, refused to believe on Jesus as the Messiah. Hanggang ngayon, maraming hudyo ayaw maniwala na si Jesus ang Messiah. Naghihintay pa sila sa kanilang Messiah. Hindi nila alam 2,000 years ago ay nagkatawang taon na ang kaang Messiah. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. Yung mga sons of the kingdom, yung mga chosen people na hindi sumampalataya sa Panginoong Yesus will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Pag binasa niyo ang hell, pag binag-aralan niyo ang hell, may experience, na experience ng mga nasa impyerno yung weeping and gnashing of teeth. Ibig sabihin, kahit na ikaw ay hudyo, kahit na ikaw ay nasa chosen people of God, pero wala kang tunay na faith kay Jesus, hindi automatic ang iyong salvation. Kahit yung Gentile na hindi kasama sa Jewish people, ipapasok ng langit. Verse 12, verse 12 tingnan ninyo. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, as you have believed, as you have believed, so let it be done for you. As you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Everybody say, As you have believed, as you have believed, so let it be done for you. Maraming lumapit kay Jesus. If you study carefully the life and teachings of Jesus in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, maraming lumapit kay Jesus. Ang sabi ni Jesus, let it be done according to your faith. Let it be done according to your faith. If you have faith as big as one inch, you can be intended to receive one inch of blessings or miracles. If you have faith as big as four or five inches, you can be intended to receive four or five inches of blessings and miracles. Let it be done according to your faith. Because God's power is constant, does not change. What is changing is the level of faith of man. He had developed God's 
kind of faith in your life. And the only way is to develop the basic discipline to be a Christian, develop your prayer life, develop your deep quality time in meditating God's Word. Meditation, not just reading, but meditation. Sabi, do you want to be successful? Do you want to be prosperous? Anong formula ng Diyos sa Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? Anong sabi ron sa Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? Sa New King James Version? Anong sabi ron? Sa Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? Everybody read. Joshua. Everybody read. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Sa ibang translation, meditate on God's law or God's word day and night. So that, so that what? So that you can observe to do everything written therein. You can obey to do, you can obey the things written therein. If you do that, anything you do, you will prosper and you will have great success. Meditation of God's Word easily give birth to God's kind of faith. And if your faith operates, remember, before I close with this, uh, to me, this is a very significant teaching. Matagal na bago ito maulit, kaya mahalaga itong teaching na nilagay ng Diyos sa puso ko. It will make you a real disciple of Christ. In the midst of various challenges and problems in this troubled world, you can not only survive, but you can emerge more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves you. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. And you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. Philippians chapter 4, verse uh, 13. If you develop the habit of effective prayer life, effective prayer life, meditation of God's Word daily, 30 minutes to one hour or even more? You will be a giant disciple of Christ before the eyes of God. You'll be a warrior. Hindi ka pwedeng takutin ng jablo kahit anong klase ng problema na sasangga mo sapagkat nasa iyo ang kalasag ng Diyos. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God, hallelujah, is life and spirit. The Word of God is the revealer of truth that sets people free. The Word of God is, has creative power. The Word of God is a medicine. Hallelujah. Kaya, while we are in the midst of this uh, novel coronavirus pandemic, popularly known as COVID-19 pandemic, and while we are waiting for the second coming of Jesus, especially the rapture of the church, the first stage of the second coming of the Lord, we must be victorious. We must fulfill God's calling in our individual life. At ang salita ng Diyos ang maghari sa ating spirit, sa ating soul, kaluluwa, kaisipan, at sa ating katawan, sa ating pagkatao. Nang sa ganun, hindi tayo mahawakan ng jablo. Do you know, ang nakalulungkot, maraming Kristiyano, directly and indirectly, hawak pa rin ng jablo. Ang kanilang kaisipan, hawak ng jablo. Ang kanilang mga values, distorted values. I know, there are many Christians, even workers, even pastors, even bishops, they could not obey and follow the perfect will and command of the Lord. Bukang bibig nila, Lord, I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. Sabi ng Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, Love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Pero pagdating sa araw-araw na buhay, sa paggawa ng mga desisyon, ang nagahare biases, prejudices, punong-puno ng kayabangan, arrogance, kapulaluan, nakala nila, napakarunong nila. We can never be intelligent people unless we submitted ourselves to the will of God written in the Word of God. Hala, the message of the Lord is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is wisdom to those who are being saved. Kaya sabi nga ni St. Paul sa Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for this is 
the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. Ako'y tuwan-tuwa nung makausap ko ang Honorable Secretary of Justice, Maynard Guevara, taga Mekawayan siya. He is a very humble man and yet so brilliant, so brilliant. Nagtataka ko may mga policy siya ang decision na babasa ko sa dyaryo. Kung minsan kontra sa pulisiya ng national government, even national leadership, tinatayuan niya yung righteous principle. Yun pala, nagbabasa siya ng daily bread. Nagbabasa pa siya ng Bible. Yung kanyang mga kapatid na sa Amerika lahat, yung isang kaisesa niyang lalaking kapatid, binigyan siya matagal na ng New King James Version Bible. Kaya siya ay Bible reader for many years. Kaya nakaukit sa kanyang isip, sa kanyang kaluluwa, sa kanyang espiritu, ang salita ng Diyos. Kaya ma, kung lahat lang ng mga leaders sa buong gobyerno, hindi lang ng Pilipinas, lahat ng bansa ay magkakaroon ng addiction. Addiction not to drugs, addiction not to pride and arrogance, but addiction to the Word of God. Magbabago ang buhay ng tao, magbabago ang bansa. Kaya, panalangin natin, if Jesus would tarry, ibig sabihin, kung magtagal-tagal pa ang pangalawang pagbabalik ng Panginoon, especially the rapture of the church, ma-maximize natin ang ating productivity in expanding God's kingdom. Pag nasa atin ang salita ng Diyos, nasa atin ang Diyos. Pag hindi nakatanim sa puso natin ang salita ng Diyos, napakadaling pumasok ang jablo sa ating isip, sa ating puso't kaluluwa. Kaya maraming Kristiyano nagsimulang tama. Many Christians, even workers, even bishops, pastors, evangelists, they started right but ended wrong. Be vigilant. Be sober. Because your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion looking for someone whom to devour. 1 Peter 5.8 Kaya nabubuhay ngayon tayo sa multi-crisis. Ang tanong na iba, megit anim na buwan na ang coronavirus pandemic or COVID-19 pandemic, anim na buwan na. Bakit hindi pa tumitigil? Eh kayang patigilin ng Diyos in one day? Kayang patigilin ng Diyos ng in one week? Itong plague na ito, itong pestilence na ito, at worldwide ito, hindi lang sa isang bansa. All nations of the world are, are adversely affected. Big companies, small companies went bankrupt, nakalubog sa utang. At maraming tao ngayon, millions, ay nabubuhay sa hirap. Parang isang kahig, santo ka. Mga drivers natin sa Manila, nagpapalimus na, wala nang makain. Bakit? Pag walang wisdom ng Diyos ang pagharap sa problema. At saka hindi pa makita ng Diyos. Sabi ng mga propeta, genuine prophets, sa kanilang pagsasuri, the holy anger of God has not yet subsided. That's why the judgment against all nations of the earth is still alive and existing. Oo nga naman. Sipon yung pandemic ito, buong mundo. Ngayon lang nangyari sa history ito. For the last hundreds of years and even thousands of years, except ng panahon ni Noah na ginuno na ng mundo, ng Diyos ang buong mundo sa big flood, ngayon lang nangyari na ang wake-up call ay buong mundo. Noon dati ang wake-up call sa isang bansa lang, o dalawang bansa, o isang continent, o isang region, papasok ang disasters, calamities, tsunami, earthquake, lahat ng klaseng disasters, famine, Pestilence sa isang bansa o grupo ng mga bansa. Pero ito, worldwide. <laughs> hindi ka makabiyahe. Ang dami nagsusuicide, hindi nyo alam. Dahil nadidepress, nakakulong lang sila sa bahay nila. Eh, yung puro social media. Ang social media, ibubuli ka kung, di ka marun- kung wala sa iyo ang Diyos. Kaya maraming mga kabataan nag- nagpapakamatay, nagpakamatay sa history. Kasi nga, Si Satan ay active. Dapat by this time, milyong-milyong tao nagpakita ng worldwide repentance, worldwide exodus of millions of people going back to God, the Creator of heavens and the earth. 
Pero ang mga tao, mar maraming churches, dead churches kuminsan, with due respect, hindi naman lahat, maraming churches naman, alive na alive. Pero, walang makita ang Diyos ng genuine repentance. Yung massive repentance, millions of people going back to God, to the Creator. The exodus of human race to go back to the Creator of heavens and the earth. Repenting, submitting to the Lordship of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Wala pa eh. Kaya umabot tayo, make it six months na, pandemic. Samantalang in, in, the, in the twinkling of an eye, God can easily subdue and obliterate this uh, China-made virus. Pero pinayagan ng Diyos yan eh. Para ang tao magsisi ng kasalanan, magbalik loob sa Diyos. Yung spirit ng 2 Chronicles 7.14, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal from heaven, I will forgive your sins, and I will heal your land. Kung ang bayan o mga taong tinawag sa aking pangalan ay magpapakumbaba, mananalangin, tatalikod sa kanila, hahanapin ang aking muka at tatalikod sa kanila mga kasalanan. Ako na, na Diyos mula sa langit, pakikinggang ko inyong mga daing at pananalangin, patatawarin ko ang inyong mga kasalanan at pagagalingin ko ang inyong bayan. Kayang-kaya ng Diyos na pagalingin ang ating bayan. Kung naghihirap man ang ibang mga bansa, kaya ng Diyos na paunda rin ang ating bansa. Bakit? Eh, Diyos siya. May pangako siya sa Psalm 37 verse 19. My people, in times of disasters, my people will not wither. In, in the days of famine, my people will even enjoy plenty. Wow! Yun ang nangyari kay Joseph sa Old Testament. Nagkagutom ang buong mundo. Pero yung mga tao ng Diyos ay nag nabuhay ng may kasaganaan. Kaya ng Diyos yun. Kaya itong message na ito, itanim niyo sa inyong puso, ishare ninyo. Praise God. At habang naghihintay tayo ng second coming ni Jesus, especially the rapture of the church, the first stage of His second coming, occupy till I come, do my business till I come, sabi ng Panginoon sa Luke 19 verse 13, let us be active in sharing the gospel of love and salvation of Jesus. At ang Diyos ay matuwa sa ating buhay. Pag natuwa ang Diyos sa iyong buhay, ano sabi ng Numbers 14 verse 8? If God is pleased of your life, He will lead you to that land filled with milk and honey. Meaning to say, God will lead you to your promised land. Do you want to reach your promised land? Do you, gusto niyo bang marating ang inyong lupang pangako ng Diyos sa kanyang mga anak? I know my plans for you, not to hurt you, not to destroy you, but to bless you, to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Amen? Palakpakan natin sandali ang Panginoon. Hallelujah. Tumayo tayong lahat sandali. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Let's sing one song before I close with pastoral prayer. The Lord impress upon my heart at this point of time. Uh, let the pastors of JIL and other pastors of different Genevieve Christian churches to teach eschatology the study of the last things or the, uh, the study of the end times. But there are times that we need to minister to people. Kayong sumusubaybay sa television program na ito, sa God's Channel of Blessings, Channel 33, o sa ibang cable, sa number, sa, ibang, sa cable system, ibang number, nitong ating Light TV. At kayo naman ay nanonood sa face, Facebook page, ng Jesus Lord Church Worldwide Live o doon sa tinatawag na YouTube. May YouTube channel din ang Jesus Lord Church Worldwide Live. Kayong sumusubaybay, you who are listening to these teaching messages, just let the Word of God enter your heart. The Word of God is so amazing. And if you live up according to the word of the Lord, your earthly existence will be worthy existence. Let's sing a song. Please.
That's what I love for. A heart that follows hard after me. Sin will not come in. A heart that's undivided. The one you rule and reign. A heart that feels compassion. That pleases you, my Lord. Sweet hope of worship. That rises. Before we sing again, for the last time, we will sing again this beautiful song. Before we sing this, just a reminder to all of us, in Beatitudes, God said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. People cannot see the condition of your heart, but our individual heart is exposed to God. We cannot hide anything. We should be reminded there is no substitute for genuine, passionate love for God. If we have passionate love for God, we will welcome even the rebukes of the Holy Spirit, even the rebukes of the Word of God. We should welcome them because open rebuke is better than secret love. Ang mga taong ayaw tumanggap ng rebuke from the Word of God, they can never please God and they're closing the door of heaven for them. Humility is a virtue, but pride, the enemy of humility, goeth before the fall. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5 verse 8 in Beatitudes. In Psalm 24, verse 3 and verse 4, Who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord? Who shall stand on the holy ground of the holy God? Only those with clean hands and a pure heart. Pure heart. In 1 Peter 1, I think 16, 15, 16, God is holy and you must be holy. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, the groom referring to Jesus is preparing to welcome the bride, the church, the radiant church or the glorious church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, but holy and sanctified. Yes, Jesus Christ, the groom, after the rapture, will be married to the church without spot, without wrinkle. The glorious church. Because the ho Jesus is so holy. And in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14, pursue peace and be holy. For without holiness, no man can see God. Very clear. Nobody can philosophize the Bible. Do not let Satan to succeed in your mind, in your heart. If you are not with me, Jesus said, you're against me. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. I remember St. Paul said, If I will seek the applause of men, if I will seek the approval of men, if I will seek the earthly applause of men, I cannot truly really serve God. Let's go back to the basics. Let's sing this song not just singing this without understanding. Sing this song wholeheartedly from your heart. Sing this song prayerfully because the Lord Jesus is here. Matthew 18 verse 20, Jesus said, If there are two or three gathering together in my name, I am in their midst. I am in their midst. Hallelujah. Sing this song prayerfully before I close in pastoral prayer. A pure heart. Sing it prayerfully. That's what I long for. A heart that follows hard after thee. A pure heart. That's what I long for. A heart. 
heart that follows hard after thee. A heart that hides your words so that sin will not come in. Let us all be silent, please. Let's bow. Let's bow our head. Maging kayong sumusubaybay sa television program na ito o sa live stream sa YouTube or Facebook. Let's bow our head. In silence, we can easily feel the presence of the living God through His Holy Spirit. And remember this, viewing this program, wherever you are in four corners of the earth, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who hung at the earth upon nothing, Job 26 verse 7. The God who said the heaven is His throne and this earth is just His footstool, Isaiah 66 verse 1. This living God, the creator of the universe, is not limited by distance and even time. Wherever you are, you can be touched by the healing hands, deliverance, delivering hands of God, the loving touch of God. Hallelujah. Remember, our God in heaven is so merciful and so loving. He commended, He demonstrated His love for you and me that when we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for you and me. Romans 5 verse 8. Nagawang sakripisyo ng Diyos Ama ang kanyang kaisa isang bugtong nanak. Dahil sa pagmamahal sa inyo sa akin, na nung tayo mga makasalanan pa, hindi pa tayo nahuhugasan ng banal na dugo ni Jesus na dumaloy sa Cristo ng Kalbaryo, hindi pa tayo naboborn again, hindi pa tayo tumatanggap ng karapatang maging anak ng Diyos. Anak pa tayo ni Satanas sa sanlibutan, nagawa ng Diyos na mahalin ikaw at ako. Kaya dapat lang nating alalahanin ang kanyang kadakilaan. At maniwala kayo, mabubuksan ang buong langit sa ating buhay kapag natutuhan nating magkaroon ng katapangan, ihandog natin muli ang ating buhay sa Kanya. Labanan natin ang lahat ng mga kaparaanan ng jablo. Mamatay tayo sa ating sarili. Ang sabi ni St. Paul, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of the living God who loves me and gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Do you want to please the heart of God? Let us step down from our personal throne and let Jesus take over our personal throne. Remember the word of, uh, of John the Baptist. Boss, the man you baptized in Jordan River is now the center of attraction. He is now the superstar. He is now the object of attention of the people, many people, no longer you. I, instead na mainggit si John the Baptist, instead for him to be envious and to feel an insecurity, he jumped with joy, paraphrasing. He jumped with joy and saying, Praise the Lord, I succeeded in my mission. I must decrease and He must increase. Hallelujah. Abang tayo nakayukod, nakapikit, makipag-usap kayo sa Panginoon. I want to give you a chance to talk to Jesus, who said, If there are two or three gathering together in my name, I am in their midst, the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus is now in your midst, in our midst. Talk to Him, Lord Jesus, by your Holy Spirit. Forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for all my shortcomings. Lord, forgive me. I know I failed you many times in the past. Forgive me, Lord. O sabi niyo, individually ang Panginoon. Hindi lang yung sumunod kayo sa prayer na pwede kong pangunahan, pero you talk to God personally. 
Ang daling lapitan ng Panginoon, sino man ang lumalapit sa aking paraan, sa anumang paraan na hindi ko itataboy, John 6.37, Anyone who comes to me, in no way will I cast him out, sabi niya sa John 6.37. Anyone of you who, is, who labor, who is heavily laden, heavily burdened, come to me and I will give you rest. Matthew 11.28 Sino man sa inyong nabibigat ang lubasa sa katakot-takot na problema, lumapit lang kay sa akin, bibigyan ko kayo ng kapahingahan. Ang kapahingahan binibigay ng Diyos ay may solusyon sa problema. May pagpapalat himala, may kagalingan. Anything you ask in my name, I will do it, John, Jesus said in John 14 verse 14. Yes, Lord, patuloy mong pakinggan ang individual prayer ng iyong mga anak. Hindi lamang dito sa loob ng Jesus Lord Church Prayer Garden Church, kundi maging ang sumusubaybay sa television program na ito, Panginoon, sa Luzon, Visayas, sa Mindanao, at maging sa live stream, sa Facebook page, at saka sa, eh, sa YouTube channel ng Jesus is Lord Church Worldwide. Nasaan man silang sulok ng digdig, Panginoon, abutin mo sila because... I have told them the truth that you are not limited by distance, space, and even time. Yes, yes, Lord. Buksan mo ang buong langit, Panginoon. Buksan mo lahat ng bintana ng kalangitan. Open all the windows of heaven, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lay your hands upon everyone. You love your people. You love all these people, Lord. You love all human beings. You died for them. You died for me. You died for us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Kayong mga naka-lockdown, kayong mga naka-self-quarantine sa iba't ibang mga lugar, sa inyo yung tahanan, take advantage that God is giving you enough time to know the Creator, to know the living God. Oh, don't waste your time in approaching Jesus, the exact representation of the living God. Hebrews chapter 1, verse, ber, Hebrews chapter 1, the exact representation, the radiance, the radiance and the glory of the living God, the Lord Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Because sabi niyo si Lord, sabi ng 1 John 1.9 If you confess your sins to Jesus He is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all your unrighteousness In Isaiah 59 verse 1 and verse 2 God said My hands are not short that I could not reach you My ears are not heavy nor close that I could not hear you But your iniquities, your sins are the reasons why My face is hidden from you and I cannot answer your prayers Sins, iniquities are obstacles hindrances to God's answers prayers All of us are sinners. Romans 3.23, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, The wages of sin is death, not only physical but spiritual death, leading to second death in the lake of fire. Revelation 20, verse 14, verse 15. But if you confess your sins to Jesus, He is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. 1 John 1.9 Oh, in the midst of pandemic, worldwide pandemic, Let's knock out Satan in our lives by submitting our lives to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the soon coming King who will reign for 1,000 years. Hallelujah. Who will be the world's president upon His second coming here. Mga minamahal, just pray such simple prayer, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Forgive me for all my sins, inherited and committed sins. Cleanse me with your holy blood shed in Calvary. I dedicate my life to you. Come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord and be my God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your holiness and your righteousness. Fill me with your love and wisdom. And help me to live this life serving you faithfully with integrity, with faithfulness, with excellence, O oh God so that I can glorify your name in my life. Hallelujah. Use me, Lord, for the expansion of your kingdom. Give me the courage to share the love of Christ to many people so that when you come back here on earth, 
you will be satisfied of my humble service to you. Raise up your hands, please. Everybody say, thank you, Lord Jesus. You died for my sins. You shed your holy blood for the remission of my sins, for my forgiveness. I believe in my heart. You rose up from the dead for, your, for our justification. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I dedicate my life. I dedicate my life to you. You are my only Savior. My only Lord. My King. My healer. My deliverer. My provider. And my God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to serve you according to your perfect will. Thank you, Lord. I am forgiven. I am saved. I am now a child of the living God. The God of new beginnings. Thank you for my second chance, Lord. To serve you faithfully. With integrity. With faithfulness. And with excellence. Thank you, Lord. I'll just be the one to pray. Lord, if you can see the mountains of problems in the lives of all these people, inside and outside of this church, even among the viewers of this program, in YouTube as well as in Facebook, Lord, reach them, Lord, by the awesome power of your Holy Spirit, for you are not limited by distance, space, and even time. Lay your hands upon everyone. Lord, take away any sickness, any disease that you can see in their bodies. People suffering from cancer, people suffering from heart disease, lung disease, pneumonia, and all kinds of sicknesses, diseases discovered and discovered by medical science. Lord, we still believe you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God who healed your people. Lord, heal your people. Take away sicknesses, diseases from them. Even cancerous diseases, Lord, take them away. Yes, by the 39 stripes suffered by Jesus on the cross, all diseases were covered by His supreme sacrifice. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. By the wounds of Jesus, you were healed. Receive divine healings from the living God. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. I rebuke diseases. I rebuke sicknesses discovered and discovered by medical science in your respective body, in, your, in the body of your loved ones. I rebuke them in Jesus' name. I cancel them by the holy blood of Jesus. I release unto them the anointing of healings. Receive the anointing of healings from the top of your head up to the soles of your feet. Receive the anointing of healings in your breast. Yes. I rebuke breast cancer. I rebuke lung cancer. I rebuke cervix cancer. I rebuke diseases, heart diseases, even blindness. Yes, in Jesus' name. Dumbness in Jesus' name. All kinds of curse of sickness and disease. You are canceled by the blood of Jesus. Destroyed by the anointing power of the Holy Ghost. And I release unto the people of God receive the benefits of calvary not only salvation of your soul receive even your miracle healings your divine healings your deliverance from the bondages of the devil receive receive hallelujah even financial victory financial freedom receive even financial and material freedom receive receive all heavenly blessings from god's throne Receive God's answers to your prayers. Made in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Your, God's answers are being delivered to you right now. We rebuke obstacles. We rebuke hindrances. We cancel them by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for an open heaven now. 
you have opened the windows of heaven for your people begin to pour out all heavenly blessings and use them all Lord for the expansion of your kingdom for the blessing of the poor and the needy healings of the sick and deliverance of the captives and of course salvation of the perishing souls help your people Lord always to be ready every moment of our life here on earth so that when the rapture of your church happens no one will be left behind to the hands of Antichrist and suffer the great seven years great tribulations thank you Father God for your amazing grace everybody say thank you Lord for your amazing grace thank you Lord for your miraculous healings thank you Lord for answering the desires of our heart we are children of the living God we are victorious hallelujah praise the Lord in our eternal home in heaven. And as God prepares po the best for us, 
let us also prepare the best for Him. And that includes our offering and giving. Sino po ang naniniwala that the best position to receive is when we are in the position of giving? Nawa po, sa pagbabalik ng ating Panginoon, madatnan po niya tayo na nasa posisyon ng pagkakaloob ng ating buhay, ng ating talento, lakas, talino, and even our resources po and material possessions. Ang sabi po sa 2 Corinthians 9 verses 10 and 11, And God, who supplies seed for the sower and bread to eat, will also supply you with all the seed you need and will make it grow and produce a rich harvest for your generosity. He will also make you rich enough to be generous at all times so that many will thank God for your gifts which they receive from us. Isa po ang pangako ng Panginoon sa lahat po ng marunong magkaloob ng may kagalakan na ang lahat po ng pangangailangan ng ating mga puso ay kakatagpuin niya ng siksik, liglig at umaapaw. Sino po ngayon ang excited na to unlock the floodgates of heaven and give God his best offering. At sa atin po mga taga-subaybay, you may also partner with us and send your generous gifts through the account numbers po that are being flashed on your screen. Tayo po ay manalangin. Aming Diyos Ama, maraming marami pong salamat sapagkat sa inyo po galing ang lahat ng mabubuting bagay na mayroon po kami. At Panginoon, ang tangi po naming hangarin sa umagang ito ay makita nyo po ang bawat isa na naghahandog po ng pinakamainam, not our second best Lord, but the best that you deserve, our Father. Panginoon, lahat po ng may pangangailangan na inyo pong kinakatagpo, and we are releasing our faith right now, and we are declaring an open heaven to all your people na sumasabay po sa panalangin ito. May you bless the offering, may you bless the givers, and may you bless this ministry. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen.
to the Lord today for the life of our G, uh, uh, Jam and Bia. Praise the Lord. Every first uh, Sunday of the month, we are having our communion. I want you to open your Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, 24, 25, and 26. This has become a very familiar verse or verses to us from the Scripture or from the Word of God. And alam ko ngayong umaga, sino po dito punung puno ng salita ng Diyos at busog na busog, suma, sumigaw na malakas na amen at palakpaka ng Diyos. Amen, amen, amen. And we will complete this by remembering what Jesus has done for us in the cross of Calvary. And we thank God for His powerful, clear, and precise words today delivered, of course, by our Bishop, Brother Eddie. As we read, alam nyo po, nagbabasa tayo ng salita ng Diyos and there are rema words. These are words that does not only become logos or words that are written and read, but this becomes a convicting word of the Lord. Sabi po dito, I always read this, heard this many times, but there is a rem, a word that I would like to share with you right Sabi po sa verse 11, For I received from the Lord what I also pass unto you, the Lord Jesus on the night He was betrayed. I know familiar na po kayo sa whole verses and verses preceding after 23. But I want to underline the word on the night he was betrayed. Can you say that with me? On the night he was betrayed. Ready, go. On the night he was betrayed. You know, betrayal is a very, pain, a very painful human experience. And you know, when Jesus was betrayed, we can learn something. He did something that no man would ever do. And what did Jesus do? When he wa- did when he was betrayed, anong ginawa ng Panginoong Heso Kristo when he was betrayed? On the night he was betrayed, he, he did this. He took bread. Kumuha po siya ng tinapay. At hindi dyan natatapos ang verse. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When he was about to be betrayed, it, this was not only the night he was betrayed. This was also the night he will be denied by Peter three times. This will, it will be also the night that his disciples will desert him. So it was the night of betrayal, the night of denial, and the night of the night that the, his disciples will desert him. But despite knowing that his disciples will desert him, deny him, betray him, you know what? Hindi siya kumuha ng bread knife. Ang kinuha niya, he took a bread. Imagine a person about to rebel. The Lord took a bread and fed that person. That's how good our God is. Can I hear an amen? Palakpakan muna natin ang Diyos na buhay. He is the God who can turn, turn rebels into worshipers. And this, this morning, we are here today. We were all betrayers. Binetray natin ang Panginoon once upon a time in our life. We deserted Him. We disobeyed Him. We became rebels. But He turned it all around when He offered His life, His body, His blood. On the, on the cross of Calvary. Sino ting ngayong umaga, nagpapasalamat that Jesus considered you and He invited you into His family despite of what we have done to Him. Can I hear an amen? The biggest clap of praise to the Lord. He can turn rebels into worshippers. 
And today as we receive communion, we all know the prerequisite. And Bishop Brother Eddie invited us to come to the spiritual altar, of course, offer our bodies as living sacrifice, repent from our sins. We are already forgiven, but now we will seal the deal. We will seal the victory today by thanking God that He turned our life around from, become, from rebels to worshipers. Today, let us give thanks to the Lord. Let's remember what He has done for us. Can I hear an amen? amen. On that night, He was betrayed. He took bread and He had given thanks and broke it and said, this is my body. And of course, the cup symbolizing His blood. Ano pang sabi ng salita ng Diyos? He, he gave it to His disciples. And now we will celebrate the victory that Jesus has given us. Can we bow our heads and close our eyes and pray and as well pray for the communion elements. Heavenly Father, we thank You that on the night You were betrayed, on the night when You were deserted, denied, Lord, You did not say to Judas, to Peter and the disciples, go away, I will not make you part of this. Rather, Lord, you fed them with the most important food of all, symbolizing, Lord, your blood, the, what we will take today, the juice symbolizing your blood, and the bread symbolizing your body. We thank you that you have invited us to become your family and your children for your glory and honor. Bless the communion elements, and Lord, the benefits of the cross of Calvary, the benefits of your broken body, and the benefits of your blood, be received in full, even fullness of the healing upon our mortal body, spirit, soul, and body as well. We thank you, we praise you. And even everyone na nasa kanilang mga bahay, who has that piece of bread, who has those juice, Lord God, I pray that Lord prepare everything and most of all our lives sanctified, purified by your most precious blood. We thank you and we receive it with thanksgiving today. In Jesus' name, amen. As the communion elements will be given out, Wag muna nating kainin, wag muna nating inumin, and even those at homes, let's do this together, giving thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Sino pa po sa atin walang communion elements, you can raise your hands para po makapunta ang ating gatekeepers. Thank you. Meron na po lahat. Today is a celebration of God's goodness that He has not forgotten us. But rather, this is also a time that we will not forget Him for everything that He has done. Let us have faith on what He has done for us on the cross and all the benefits of His broken body and His blood will be upon us. Let's lift up the bread symbolizing the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 11:23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed unto you. The Lord Jesus on the night He was betrayed. He took bread and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me. Let us eat the bread symbolizing the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's lift up the cup symbolizing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink the juice symbolizing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that indeed we have the new covenant written in your blood. And I declare that from this moment on, even as a while ago it was declared, heaven is open towards your people. Lord, no sickness, no diseases shall continue to prevail over the lives of your people. No amount of curses will continue because, Lord, we have been blessed because of your broken body and because of your precious blood that flowed from the cross. Today, God, we seal this victory in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. To you be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, Amen. The best clap of praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Subscribe to youtube.com slash JIL Worldwide and be updated with the latest teachings and other church happenings. Click the subscribe button now.